Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the webinar regarding remote working in social care and uh, whether or not this will be the new normal and what we've learned due to COVID. Uh, the, the webinar today is uh, be hosted by myself. Uh, I'm Chris Tanner. I'm the client director for Aspirico. Um, Previous prior to joining Aspirico, uh, I've worked in uh, the social care sector um, in ops director, registered managers, uh, registered manager roles, and um, as a social care project consultant with a particular interest in new models of working and how that can be supported by technology. So uh, this webinar seemed a natural fit for me. And I will be joined by Lisa Jane Humphreys, who uh, is our international client director. Um, and so between the two of us, we've got over 35 years experience on the social care side. Um, so I totally look forward to having a discussion with you today. So just to give you a brief overview of what the webinar is about and why we're here, um, we just want to have a little look at how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted social care sector, what the response has been to that impact and, and what it's forced upon us. Um, how technology can support this response, in particular, obviously, iPlanet. Um, we'll have a quick demo, we'll have a demonstration of iPlanet, function, focusing on the functionality relevant to COVID-19 and the sort of remote working that's um, that has been imposed on us due to it. And towards the end, at the end, there will be an opportunity for questions and answers. So if we start with the social care sector impact, I think there's been a lot of news uh, headlines around um, the, the real struggles in the pl planning beforehand and now that it's kicked in, uh, the lack of PPE is widely reported. Uh, the NHS gets an awful lot of coverage, but social care sector um, is, has been left behind a little bit, I think, is starting to catch up, even then very specifically care homes rather than the wider sector. Um, and I think it's, you know, it, staff shortages have been a huge issue. Um, there, as well as the PPE, and try to re -manage, manage that um, uh, manage that lack of resource that, that's come around because of it. But care and support can't be delivered remotely. Whilst a lot of the country is working from home, well, you know, there's been a lot of uh, media coverage of everyone using Zoom and Skype, etc. It's not really that that suitable for back office functions in the social care sector, but really actual care and support can't be delivered remotely. It's a human service. It needs human input to, to support other humans. Um, the isolation of service users can have a real impact on mental, physical well-being. So obviously this remains a priority for providers to, to ensure that service users are, are coping through what is a very unusual time and the lack of structure, lack of routine, lack of access to family, lack of access to regular activities can have a huge impact on someone with a learning disability or a mental health issue, dementia or something. <clears throat> and then for providers themselves, you had done, you know, with, with social distancing, with reduced workforces, um, a lot of management, supervisory staff uh, still need to monitor the safety of their staff and of their service users, but they may not necessarily have line of sight if they're, you know, working from home, working, you know, it could be miles away. And then they also need to organise and deploy uh, their, their, their resources that they do have. It may be reduced staff numbers and again, working around things like PPE um, and people coming in and out of hospital who may or may not be infected. So really, what we, there's been a real impact on how uh, providers are working in the social care sector, having to change their service delivery model um having to adapt and adjust um, but you know there may also be some lessons learned on on more permanent uh changes to be made and how we look at building resilience for the future and whether or not there may be some benefits you know people just dis discovering why do we need to pay for a huge office when the technology is there to support um a new new way of working and really I just want to explore Technology as a as a being able to support that, and in particular, iPlanet, obviously, because that's our that's uh, the product that Aspira Co produce. So, if we're looking at iPlanet and how iPlanet supports remote working, iPlanet is cloud based, which means it's accessible from any device anywhere that has an internet connection. So that provides uh, staff and managers real time data 
for organizing their services and monitoring what's being delivered um, from wherever they may be. It's configurable, um, which means, as we'll show you in the demo, you can actually configure the system to monitor or record or log certain activity specifically related to COVID or you know anything else that your service seems uh, necessary. You know, hopefully we'll come out of COVID, but we need to be prepared for a similar a similar pandemic in the future and um, uh, and also for your own service protocols and processes. It also improves communication with everybody having access with the staff being able to communicate with managers wherever they are, but also the unique architecture of iPlanet is actually built around the service user. So that put, puts them at the heart of this. So it's their care plan, it's their records, and they are also able to invite people in to their records and communicate directly. So whether that's their family and friends or their team of staff or the management, and some of our customers are actually uh, using it to involve social workers, um, district nurses, third sector organisations, such as volunteers who may be involved in that overall circle of support. Um, and that really, that that's really, um, really supports cooperation and integration between services, which is something you know on a wider scale, something that needs to be looked at. I think this COVID situation has certainly highlighted uh, the fragmentation of the system. Um, as well as individual services. So, what we have found so far, we've spoken to a lot of our existing customers, and we've done some reach out to to other organisations just to see how iPanet is being used um, during the COVID nineteen situation to support their remote working and new models. So, the messaging system, as I mentioned, is really important for keeping in touch and for exchanging information for teams that are now widely dispersed and may not have the line of sight that they were used to. Uh, and and again, the invited guest element where, where service users are able to involve families, friends and other people in the service of support to keep that communication going. Uh, we also have notes and logs. So the, the, the daily records that uh, support staff would, 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 would leave, would, would records that would make on a daily basis. We've been, as you can see here, this quick screenshot is an example of a COVID-19 specific note which we can add into the system. It's been configured so that you can actually track in, in an individual's journey uh, with you know whether they're asymptomatic develop symptoms whether they have systems and i think this recording function is very it gives oversight for managers in real time but when we do come out of the other side of the pandemic it will really allow um some analysis and reporting um on how to deal with it and hopefully inform decisions in the future on resilience building and business continuity uh, individuals also have a calendar. This is being used quite well. It, it, this is for service users that can see what's coming up and obviously a lot of their activities and the more involved outcome focused elements of their support is probably on hold at the moment. But being able to share, to know that they've got a Skype call with mum every night, it can be really beneficial to give them something to look forward to. Then on a location level, their location notes and the location, location calendar uh, it's being utilised a lot where if you have a particular service or a location, whether it's a care scheme, a care home, a supported living facility, whatever it may be, for exchanging notes for that location, again, providing management oversight where management may not be able to access it straight away, uh, be, be there in person, sorry. But also for staff teams to see what the, where the risks may be, who's coming and going, who's been infected, who hasn't been infected, what cleaning regimes have been put in place, well infection control regimes have been put in place. And also uh, the incident management module part of iPlanet as well can be used to monitor and manage specific COVID incidents as well. So we just, just before we come on to the demonstration, um, iPlanet itself is a, a very in-depth system. Uh, the core iPlanet modules there you can see in blue. And then there are additional optional modules in red there. So it's you know depending on the type of service you have and how you you know how you would use it or how you may want to to use it to support uh, service delivery. Um, it's very configurable and you know it, for smaller providers that may not need certain functionality um, or may need very specifics. But what we're going to look at today is going to be very specific to how it's being used and how it can be used um, to promote remote working during uh, the, the COVID crisis and in, in general. 